Hi there. This is QPAS, or Quad Peak Animation System, from Make Noise. It's a fairly fresh look at stereo filtering using four cores. And it has two mystery inputs. One is powering the kick in this jam, and the other is doing this. Okay, we'll get back to this jam at the end of this video. Let's get started. The idea isn't to give you individual control of every parameter of each filter, but rather it's a take on how four filters can work together as a whole, whether in mono or preferably in stereo, to form a playable instrument. It also comes with two mystery wildcard inputs, which make noise don't explain, so we'll try to figure out what they do, as well as take a look at QPAS's very interesting implementation of filter resonance. Now, if you're looking for a module that will give you four individual filters bundled into one panel, this isn't it. Rather, QPOS is an attempt to combine four filters with unified and simplified controls in a way that they play together as one instrument. Before I dive into the details, let's just hook it up and take a quick listen. I'll be taking a mono audio out of Mother32 and converting it to stereo in QPOS. I'll start with a simple filter sweep and you get a subtle stereo effect even without any resonance but if we bring it up it'll be a little bit more apparent on screen you're seeing a spectrum analysis of the left and the right sides and if we spread the filters apart you now see two cores per side or can hear two cores per ear at four different frequencies. Now you really need two speakers or headphones on to appreciate this. And since it's winter, you're gonna have to put your coat on now. I'll turn up the noise. This filter was inspired by the Moog Voyager's Stereo Dual Low Pass filter. Only here you get two peaks per side instead of one, a broader range of stereo filters, and quite a bit more as we'll see in a bit. Let's start with the basics. QPass has four state variable filters and peaks each of these filters supports four modes or states, low pass, band pass, high pass, and smile pass. I'll demonstrate this with noise. A low pass filter cuts out the high frequencies and lets the low ones pass. Band pass lets a narrow band of frequencies through. High pass. Let's only the high ones out and filters out the lower frequencies. And Smile Pass is like a notch filter, but as you crank up the resonance or the peaks, it basically doesn't filter out anything, but does let the peaks through. Let's hear this. Tone, right? You can see all the harmonics are there. The peaks are just added to them. Now, this is a really, really neat and unique feature. The filters don't filter anymore. You just have four peaks that you can use to enhance various frequencies. Make noise, call this a smile filter because you get up to four peak resonances and get to keep all the harmonic content, hence the happy smile. Now, up until now, I've been showing you a mono source fed into stereo. If you 
plug just one cable out the left side, the mono side, then all four peaks will be sent out one output. So you can see them sort of peaking here. Only on the left side in this case. And this happens in all filters. Bend pass, high pass, except the smile pass, which is always stereo. So only two peaks here. And then you can see the other two on the right side. And of course you can hear all four when you're in stereo. QPOS also accepts stereo inputs, which can be sent either to the mono output or to both outputs. Okay, so let's talk about the resonance. So QPOS has one big knob in the middle, which controls the cutoff for all four filters. Right, as you saw before. And resonance is an increased amplification of the harmonic content at each of the four cutoff frequencies of each of the four cores. Now, the resonance works in a very interesting way here by feeding the bandpass filter back into the filter. The amount of feedback can be controlled by this knob and with external voltage as well through this attenuverter. And there are two important things you need to know about resonance here. Number one is that it doesn't self oscillate into a sine wave. So if I bring the peaks together, you'll notice, maybe I'll just bring them into one on each side, you'll notice they only play the harmonics. Right? Obviously the higher we go there are more harmonics and they'll just play their own tone, but as long as you're just in this area, they will always emphasize just the harmonics. Which makes them very, very musical as you play across the keyboard. No matter how high I crank up the resonance, the filters won't self-oscillate unless there's some noise coming in. Right, So they need some content to work on. And the second thing you'll notice is that the resonance, even though it doesn't self-oscillate, does ring out. Why don't I just make this into a very quick noise? Right? So the higher the resonance, the longer the ring. So just noise and literally ringing out based on the frequencies of each filter. You can see at the highest level, it takes it quite a while to die down. Now if that bothers you, you can always modulate this to silence the resonance. But this gives this filter quite an interesting character. We'll get back to the resonance in a bit. Just to complete the tour of the interface, there is a VCA here, which is controllable with voltage or with this knob, and turning it clockwise goes beyond unity to drive the filter. The interesting thing here is that the VCA comes before the filter, so if you feed it with something and then turn down the VCA, it'll still ring. If you want this not to ring, you can either modulate the filter frequency and make it sort of like a low pass gate, or just reduce the Q. An envelope here would give you resonance without the ringing. I'll plug these guys in here so we can see a little bit more of what's going on on the bottom. Each two filters, the left two and the right two, have a radiate control, which as you saw before, is the distance between the peaks. This obviously gets into formant territory. So this left knob brings the two left filters together to one frequency and the right knob does the same. 
for the two filters on the right side. Each of the radiate controls can be modulated separately with control voltage, and if you only use the left input, it's normaled to the right one as well. The attenuverters will determine the degree, obviously, as usual, and you can also invert the polarity if you want. Now, while the filters don't self-oscillate, they do resonate, and you might ask yourself, can this be played with one volt per octave control? And the answer is not directly. So if you plug volt per octave into the main filter frequency control, it won't track precisely. It's close, but not precise. But with the help of a stack cable and a little extension into frequency one and a good ear or a tuner, can get pretty close. So as you spread the filters out and start modulating stuff, this could be quite interesting. Okay, so we've covered the filter mode outputs, the VCA, filter frequency control, the radiate controls, and even Q control. So what are these two inputs? Well, as of the making of this video, make noise won't say. It's sort of like a puzzle that's left for us to figure out. They say they're connected to a bunch of internal parameters. I've only had QPass for a few days, and so far I've figured out at least one thing that these do that indeed you can't do anywhere else on the panel. To demonstrate this, I'll take a regular output for maths and plug it into here just so we can see voltage levels over here on uh, Ether by Instro. And then let's start with this guy. I'll connect this to here and now it seems like everything is as it was before but notice as i increase voltage here see that so as i go above above one and a half or 1.6 volts check out what happens the bottom two filters get a little decay envelope applied to them and it seems like the depth of that decay depends on how quickly I pass those 1.5 or 1.6 volts. So if I do it really gently, it'll be just a small modulation depth. But if I go quickly, right, it'll go pretty high. So cool, that's at least one thing that the left exclamation mark input does. Let's check out the right one. And can you guess? Yep, a decay envelope gets applied to the cutoff frequency of the top two filters, left and right. So that's what they do at the very least. If you find other uses for them or other things they impact, please let me know in the comments section below. I'll be happy to add it, and I'll do that if I discover other things as well. So what can you do with this? Well, the kick in the intro to this video was made by syncing a trigger from Rene to the left wildcard input. And the mess you heard later on was created by feeding audio rate modulation into the right input. And we'll get to fast frequency modulation of all this stuff in a bit, but before I do that, up until now we've only been hearing a regular sawtooth wave fed into QPOS. Let's try different types of audio. I'll take this from Morphogene. So this is a standard resonant low pass filter. And it's nice for that music in the next room effect. But the smile pass filter really works nicely here to keep all the harmonic content, but emphasize specific frequencies. Cool, let's try a different loop. So this is pretty much the opposite of applying EQ to a track in a mix. Rather than using a peak to look for bad frequencies, we're using peaks to look for good ones. Definitely a few gentle sweet spots here as the peaks pick out and complement the harmonics of the main sound. Nice. 
nice. Very cool. All right, let's start modulating things <laughs> quickly and see what happens. So this is my basic pattern, and it's got these formant style peaks applied to it. But let's start shaking things up with some fast modulation. I'll take a sine wave from STO and apply that to the filter. I can set the rate on STO. Let's try the sub oscillator for square wave modulation. I could control the depth with the attenuator, but let's try the wildcard input for the top two filters. Right and left. And of course, this sounds different if I adjust the radiate parameters. Let's try the left wild card. For a change of environment, let's try maths applied to the radiate parameter. And yeah, I could go on. Let's do a little bit more FM. So that, in a nutshell, is QPOS, quite an interesting way to enhance your signal chain. If you're interested in another video with patching ideas or have any other questions, let me know in the comments section below, and as those are aggregated, I'll make a follow-up video if there's interest. There are plenty of more patching ideas, tips and tricks in my ever-expanding book available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this video was useful, and if you want to make sure you see more videos coming from me, ring the notification bell after you hit subscribe. Thanks very much for watching.